Welcome to the Monday Monologue. And you're probably wondering, hey, what are, what's all this stuff on the de table? Well, these are some transformers for one of my future builds that just came in last week. These are for a ST35 clone push-pull amp monoblocks that are in the works. We haven't even started completely finishing up what we're going to do with it. We got a lot of the parts here, but that's for a future video. You guys are here for something else. Today, we're going to talk about audiophile cables. Seriously, this is some of the most snake oil stuff I've ever seen in my life. And I've been involved in several different hobbies throughout my different things that I've been involved in. I was into bicycles for a while, and I was into been into photography almost my whole life. And audio stuff is another thing that I've been involved in. And in all these other hobbies, I've never seen anything like the just nonsense that I see people selling these crazy expensive audiophile cables. And I'm going to go through each one. We're going to start with the power cables. Now, all you have to do is go look at the million dollar studio equipment that they record the music that we listen to. They don't use any of these crazy cables when they're recording this music. And they've got gear that is way more expensive than any of us own. And they know it's not needed. And all you have to do to understand that this is not needed, and this is a very simple test. If you plug your amplifier into the wall and turn the volume all the way up with the inputs shorted or no source material coming in, but preferably short the inputs and then go listen to your speakers. If you're not hearing radio stations or a bunch of crackling and EMI interference with your system turned up to the max with no input, you're not going to hear that stuff with music playing either. And you can't make something that's going to make less noise than nothing. You can't have a power cable that's going to suck the background noise out of the room to have even a black or noise or whatever they call that. You know, I'm just stunned that people fall for this. And that's why your power supply is there. Once it goes through the first LC or RC any radio frequency or anything outside of the audio range is going to be filtered out. And the really heavy-duty current and noise that's coming into your amplifier is the 60 hertz AC that's full amperage and all that. If you're not hearing that 60 hertz inside your amp, you're not going to hear any of this other stuff either. Which gets me into the speaker cables. Now I will admit that there's a couple of things that do matter with speaker cables. And you need to make sure that resistance and capacitance. Okay? And when you're dealing with low voltage and fairly high amperage like a speaker is dealing with, you want some fairly fat cables. I would suggest for almost any speaker run, just get some 12 gauge copper wire, stranded copper wire, and you're going to be fine. I use the low voltage lighting zip cord that you get at Home Depot. And the thing that you don't want you don't want these cables, these high capacitance 
shielded cables or those flat ones where they got two of the wires flat up against each other where you're turning the speaker wire into a uh, you know into a filter you're not supposed to be using your cables for tone control I saw another video where this guy was hooking up speaker cables I'm not this is no lie he was hooking speaker cables up to the antenna jacks on a FM tuner and was pointing to the signal strength meter and saying see these wires are acting like an antenna it's radio waves that are so far outside of our hearing and they're so low a signal you couldn't possibly hear them so here's the next test for your speaker cables to see if your zip cord is the problem with your system clarity hook the speaker cables up to your speaker and you can leave the other end open or you can short it out and then put your ear up against the speaker and see if you can hear EMI or a radio station if you can't hear it when it's not connected to anything you're not going to hear it when sounds going through it it's not going to turn into some amplifying the radio signal when the music's going through the cables that's just crazy nonsense so please guys stop wasting your money on that stuff use the power cable the UL listed power cable most of these boutique ones aren't even UL listed that ought to tell you something make sure that the gauge of the power cable is adequate for the amplifier but realize that like even my higher powered tube amps they have a two amp fuse in them how much power do you think is going through these cables where they require a cable that big we're talking about a couple of amps I mean that's like what an LED light bulb uses it, it, it or close to it a hundred watt light bulbs using way more power than one of these amplifiers does and so I don't get why people think they need a three inch diameter cable with a shielded thing around it and that somehow that oh the the darkness of the sound floor was just you know amazing it's like and, and I can't even come up with the adjectives they use for this crazy mess whenever, whenever you see somebody start talking about the eclectic something or the run away the last thing I'm going to talk about is interconnect cables there there is a little something to using decent and I'm saying decent not expensive but decent internet interconnect cables and one of them is again capacitance you're gonna have uh, especially when you're going from a turntable to a phono stage and there's a resistor on the input of the phono stage to match the phono cartridge you know you can set up a, a low pass or high pass filter with that capacitor resistor network if there's too much capacitance in the cable and I remember techniques actually had some turntables where the the cables that they were hardwiring into the turntables had too much capacitance and they were causing problems and so that could be an issue and that's why a, a, a little thicker diameter cable usually has less capacitance because you're separating the signal wire from the shield the other thing that some of the nicer cables do and they're they'll, they'll call them directional cables and no it's not that what sound going through the wire in one direction versus the other makes a difference it's the shielding and what they do is in Stanford that's what these cables I got these from Amazon and they're like these WBC world best cable they're they sell them for like between 20 and 30 bucks and they come with these nice one of these Amphenol um, terminals on them so we're not talking about a ton of money here a pair of cables is 20 bucks maybe 30 bucks um, what what they're doing is they do use a nice wire made in Japan wire that 
has two, and here's the schematic of how it's wired. They have two signal wires, and then the shield is grounded at one end, and it's open on the other. And this actually helps the shielding of the cable perform better and make sure that on this very low signal input that you're not getting noise from AC wiring or something that may be near these cables. And that could be a real concern. And it's a concern when these wires are inside the amplifier. And so you want to make sure that the shielding is done right and it's being used correctly. So it's worth, like, and I try to use as short a cable as I can because this is low voltage input signal cable. And so it's worth spending a few extra bucks not getting like the $3 cables and getting, you know, something that's a little nicer. But don't spend $2,000 on, you know, these input cables or even $100. It's ridiculous. And so I'm sure the comments are going to be full of people that have spent piles of money, 20 or 30% of their sound system budget on interconnect cables or speaker cables, or, you know, they get this $500 power cable that's got a battery on it or something. I saw some crazy speaker cables that had a 72 volt battery powered bias on it because they said that there was some kind of a diode effect between the stranded wires inside the cable. It's all nonsense. None of that exists in reality in audio level frequencies. And so don't get sucked up into the hype. Save your money for where it counts like some good output transformers or some you know, several different kinds of tubes to roll into your amp or a, uh, a really nice phono needle. I'll go into that some in a future video, how important the needle in your phono cartridge is. And that is a place that you want to spend some money. But cables is not where you should be wasting your money. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like my channel, please subscribe, like the video, and I'll see you next Monday for another episode of The Monday Monologue.